this is about you. The infinite you. The part of you that can't be seen, can't be smelled, touched, or tasted. But you know you feel it. Who you really are. In a world lost to confusion, a universe that's partly illusion, when we look for meaning, we often simply find more delusion. Ground your consciousness in the sounds of the universe, a podcast about your true omnipotence. There's a universe inside each of us, but our beliefs keep us constrained to the edges of what we can imagine. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garden and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. Welcome to the one within all to your inner verse. My name is Chance and I'll be one of the voices in your head for the duration of your visit. And today I'm excited to say we'll be taking a look at some practical ways that we can put the more obnoxious or negative characters in our minds back into their proper places. Since many, if not all of you in the audience are either practicing artists or aspiring seekers of self-knowledge, one of life's hurdles that we've all tripped on is the distracting mental chatter and undesirable appetites that seem to be standard features of the human experience. If we look at the time we spend creating as not only an artistic craft, but also a vessel for voyaging, we realize that the problematic pieces of our personalities are like viruses in the ship's onboard computer systems, causing us to navigate off course and burn our fuel inefficiently. But this metaphor is more than just hyperbole. In truth, our bodies are indeed spaceships as they carry our spirit through time and space, and the beautiful things we can expressed through our bodies can lead us all to the places we desire to see and magnetize the type of energies we express right back to us. That's why today's conversation is so important because finding out that your body is your first and foremost friend in the finding of your place and passion for life leads us to the inevitable realization that this vessel has been crash landed here in the third dimension. And in order to ascend back to our rightful place in the infinite sea of imagination and manifest our deepest dreams, we must repair and upgrade that body spaceship till it's a high powered, high octane, perfectly tuned and fueled masterpiece. You can consider your health to be not only the source of all wealth and abundance, but it's also your greatest personal masterpiece and the first early warning system of when you begin to get off course. If you've been following Interverse on Facebook and YouTube, or you caught my talk at the Backwoods Music Festival at the beginning of June, you've probably heard me talking about cleansing, fasting, and purifying the organs as the best way to unblock and unlock the superpowers that are part of your chakra graphic reality projector. Even if you feel cut off from your third eye, your root, or any other part of the spectrum, you can relax by realizing you wouldn't even have a magnificent body like this if you hadn't created it from the ground up because you are universal infinite consciousness and the path back to getting above light speed is just you remembering who you are and how your chosen life support system functions. So today we are blessed with a guest who brings some of the best and cleanest vibes to his YouTube channel that you can find on the internet as the host of a fantastic station called If Only I Knew Too, a station dedicated to presenting holistic healing experiences and teaching you how to do it for yourself with detailed organ cleansing, detoxing, and metaphysical education videos. He's the probiotic preacher who's helping our insides get cleaner, the fixer upper of the universal fractal and vibe lifter who's loving life. His name is Laval Thomas, and I've had a really fun time catching up with his videos and taking 
And the timing of our chat really couldn't be more perfect. If I, I've had a recent cleanse experience myself to reflect on, and I really do think that this is likely the most important info that you can find online for getting yourself back on track to total self-realization, fearless expansion, and mind-body-spirit connection. So check the show notes for links to Laval's YouTube channel, If Only I Knew Too, and the link to subscribe to Interverse Plus on Patreon to get extended podcast content and other goodies that are totally exclusive to supporters of the show. Now it's time to get aligned and ready for an amazing lineup of life-changing knowledge. So take a second to check your breath, get that lower belly expanding on your inhales and feel your root connect to the earth star below. And you do this while sucking in the abdomen as you push out your exhale, feeling that push of the energy right out the top of your head and connecting up with the descending cosmic energy above Take as long as you need to feel this breath pattern, rewind the last 15 seconds and listen to the instruction again, and really get yourself into a good rhythm with it. And remember that you're the bridge between heaven and earth, and you can fill that gap anytime you drop into your mind-body connection through the medium of your breath, which is also your spirit. Since we're all now in the flow state of all knowing, I think we're ready to do this thing. So please lift up your grateful vibe and fling it in the direction of today's guest. Show this guy some love on social media and YouTube and welcome him to the show. He's the Mr. Clean of the chakra system and he's making the vibes shinier everywhere he's known. And I'm super excited to have Laval Thomas here on the show with us. Laval, my man, welcome to the Interverse. Ah, thank you for having me and having such a great introduction. I like to have fun with it, man. That's uh, I'm sure you understand. I see you having fun with your videos too, dude. And I really think this is some of the most relevant stuff we could get into. So I guess, you know, why don't you introduce your thing for yourself a little bit for us here? Well, like I said, my name is LeVar Thomas. I have a YouTube channel that's called If I Only Knew Two. The basic concept that came about from it was so many times in our lives, we think to ourselves, man, if I only knew that too, my life would be so much better. So I decided to share the personal experiences I have and especially the experiences of other people so that other people can avoid the mistakes that we make because we're a tribe. And if we all actually share experiences and communicate them with each other, a lot of us can avoid unnecessary mistakes and our life can be so much smoother and so much more joyful. So that's how that particular thing came about with the channel because I just had so much information I wanted to share because of so many incredible experiences. But one of the things I decided to focus on or rather three were health, spirituality, and adventure, which for me, adventure is spirituality and health. So one in the same. So that is part of my mission in life is to help people to be able to, you know, cleanse and reach a higher state. Because if you're cleansing, you're pretty much getting rid of the toxins, you're getting rid of all of the negative energy as much as possible. So therefore you're able to reach higher states. And if you're able to reach high states, then the world would be that much better. I don't know if you agree with that. <laughs> Dude, I know exactly what you mean, because there comes a point where you realize when, when you're taking responsibility for your own energy, that you actually begin to take responsibility for the entire external reality because you see it as a total reflection of the energy that you are holding on to. Or if you get into an external reality flow state, it's because your energy is flowing well within you. And it starts with stuff as simple as getting enough water because water represents the primary flow and not having that can gunk everything up. But I love what you're talking about when you say that we, you, that sharing our experiences is like, the, the most useful thing because the entire reason why there's a multiplicity in human consciousness instead of just like the one source experiencing itself in totality is because you can, no matter how infinite you are, you can only pay attention to one thing at one time. That's just like math. If you're paying attention to something, then that's the only thing that holds your attention. So we go all these different various directions in life. And when we're open and connected to each other, we can say, hey, man, don't, don't go that way. I've been there. To just don't, don't bother. Or definitely go that way. It's quick. It's a shortcut. Or, you know, there's not really any shortcuts, but it's the right. It's the, a harmonious path. It's a fun path. So whenever we're talking about 
things like DNA, DNA is actually a hol- holographic vibratory thing. Like it's, it's a two dimensional thing that's projecting three dimensions. It's really a trip. And so it's because it's a frequency type of system, then the type of frequencies we have in our body, especially like heavy metals and things we haven't cleansed from the environmental toxicity, it distorts the DNA, which distorts our path through life. And what DNA really represents as we are this chain of ancestors to present people to future people is a web across the abyss or like a, a bridge across the abyss. Cause the infinite is also the abyss. I mean, if you're talking about never ending everythingness, then it's basically a huge type of void. And the only thing that we have to travel across is our DNA. So if we're damaging our DNA, we're forgetting our story because that's where our memories are. So we're forgetting who we are. And then we're also going to forget what we're capable of. So what you're doing is like possibly the most important type of thing to be sharing with people. It's the most practical thing, I feel. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, at the end of the day, nothing is going to function properly if you're flooded with toxins. Right. Your brain is not going to function. You're going to be physically weak. And we know it's all about the voltage in the cells. Right. The amount of energy, the amount of ATP that you have in your cells dictates your life. It also dictates your emotions and which your emotions and how you feel is the quality of your life. So detoxing is almost as much important as what you're putting in your body. Because it doesn't matter what you put in your body if you're flooded with toxins, right? So it's, it's a lot of serendipity there. And that's why I chose to focus on it because I focus on it in my own life. That's what I do in my own life. And that's what I decided to do is to share. Because I had so many friends that said, hey, why don't you do a YouTube channel? Because you do so many weird and quirky things that a lot of people may not really be aware of or might have some interest in. So just share it with people. So I said, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to do that. So that started off the journey. And it just so happened that when I was being told that, I was doing a 40-day fast. And it kind of came about at the right time. Because while I was fasting, I said, well, let me just take my phone and do a quick video to see how it is. And I put it up and I posted it. And I got a lot of positive response from it. And all I did was share my personal experience on fasting and to talk about some of the brilliant people that fast during your lifetime, which most of them do. I don't care if you're talking about priests, they fast for spiritual enlightenment, Buddhist monks. If you're talking about um, reverends, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, everybody fast when they want to get over a hump in life or when they want some clarity about something that they want to, some next move that they want to make, or they want more materialism in their life. Because the more you get rid of out of that frequency, the more you get rid of out of the body, the more access you have. You got to free up the cup so some things can come in you. And most of the time, our cup is full of junk. And the junk physically translate into junk energetically. Right? And the energy that you produce actually manifests your reality. So if you don't clean up physically, everything else will be distorted. Everything else will be a lower frequency. So cleaning up emotionally will actually allow you to manifest the reality that you want. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Man, it's so true. And I love all the metaphysical connections you can make to the the chakra system and how it affects your manifestation ability. Because a lot of people will think they don't actually have the power to manifest what they say they want. But what they are not catching is that by having a root chakra that's off balance, the root chakra is also is the survival thing. So it keeps you, first of all, in a survival mode, which keeps you really from even going up into higher types of thinking very easily. And second of all, the root chakra is associated with Saturn, which is Kronos, which is time. So if the, if your time chakra, essentially, which is your root chakra, is out of whack, then you're going to be... It's essentially like a top that is not spinning very fast. If you spin a top fast enough, it appears to be just standing up still and stationary. 
But if you, if it starts to wobble, it's doing like this wobbly elliptical circle shape pattern and it's really noticeable. So in your chakra system, if something's off kilter and it's wobbling instead of spinning at the frequency that makes it appear to be still, which is how you're able to stack them on top of each other and have a column, they need to be like, they're not, not wiggling so much. Um, well, whenever that happens, whenever you get clear on the time one, then the, the time delay on the things that you're trying to manifest can really, uh, shorten. And, but the way these things might manifest could come back distorted in other emotionally tinted ways, depending on if you have blockages in the other chakras. So when it, when you said the word clarity, that was like the buzzword to me, because what I feel happens when I've been on a good diet and cleansing is clarity, which what is clarity, but the absence of color. And the chakras are the seven colors of the prism when light passes through the refractor. And whenever one of them is off spin or off, not working very well or hurting, then we get stuck in that color. That's why people that are unhealthy a lot of time are seeing red or they're angry, angry people. And, uh, so it all connects. And if you get all those colors in line and spinning, then it goes clear and you're no longer seeing through rose colored or yellow colored or whatever colored glasses. You're seeing things more like what they are. I agree. And I mean, I'm such a proponent of detoxing because that's how you get to allow these chakras in the body to recalibrate itself, right? Because that's what it's all about. A lot of times when we're out here and we're doing our day to day activities, we're at work, we're picking up so many toxins through the air, through the water, through the food, through the electromagnetic energy field that's coming through the computers. Um, through the fluorescent lights, everything is toxic. So if you're being inundated by toxins every single day, all day, it is mandatory. It's not even an option anymore. It's mandatory to detox. And it's not only physical detoxing, it's mental detoxing. It's emotional detoxing. If we don't incorporate this, it will be hard to raise our frequency, to raise our voltage to the state that's necessary to be even aligned with the new planet, right? Because either you align with the new planet or you align with the old planet. And the old planet is full of toxins, right? It's full of a lot of negative, violent energy. So the only way to really combat that is to raise your frequency. And you have to be practical about it. You know, a lot of people always go in, into this woo-woo state where everything is galactic and wonderful. And I understand it because that frequency is there, but you got to reach it. Then you got to learn how to maintain it. You got to learn how to maintain a joyful, pleasant, optimistic mindset while still being practical and experiencing 3D reality while you're here. Maybe some people are in 5D or 6D. I don't know. But the reality is we have to Detox. And that's why I focus on it so much. That's why I get so specific on different organs and whether it's the colon, which is huge. Most of us are sitting around with five to 30 pounds of fecal matter within the colon. And if that's the case, how can you actually be happy on a sour stomach? It's impossible. Just imagine the parasites and all the other entities that have negative frequencies that are actually feeding off your energy that's housed in your colon. So to be able to clean out your colon, clean out those negative energies will allow you to have a higher state of existence, will allow you to have higher clarity. So physical cleansing is completely connected to your mental and emotional and spiritual insight. Yeah, it's insane the kind of things that come out when you do a colon cleanse for the first time. I saw old pills come out, like things that I taken <laughs> who knows how long ago. So the yeah. thing is about raising your vibration or your frequency, a lot of the stuff that toxifies us is kind of put there by the suppressors are, of life to uh, keep you from getting to a certain mental state because your body and your mind are connected. Uh when you raise your vibration through some external means, like maybe a type of entheogenic plant medicine or some kind of high yeah. energy place, like a peak experience in your life, you're actually energizing those lower density and toxic things that are still inside you. So when you get to the high frequency, the fear that is part of you that you haven't uh, detoxed 
it comes at you in like the 3D world as soon as you think about it. So it becomes actually super yeah. dangerous to raise your vibration in so, some ways if you're not really savvy about that. And uh, not dangerous, but because, uh, you know, I think I believe we're all going to be on the path we're meant to be on. So I'm going to retract the word dangerous and just say yeah. he hella uncomfortable to raise your vibe to a certain level without doing some detoxing, because especially if you don't even know that what you're bringing to you is some fear that's inside you that you need to realize is an illusion and integrate, then you're going to have like this. <laughs> I know that you were you know kind of past this level, but you told this story on your YouTube channel about going into a low frequency state because of a bad day or something happening, yeah. going to sleep unhappy kind of and waking up the next day. And one of the things that happened to you, and you can talk more about the comedy of errors and trials of that day, but how you resolved it. I'd love to get that story. But uh, a guy came at you like all crazy, like what do you, you know who I am? Like, he's going to fight you. <laughs> and it was just sort of like something being drawn to you about anger inside yourself is how you put it. And I totally have experienced that as well. Yeah, that, that was a really, it was such an interesting story. That's why I actually had to share it because I was completely aware as an athlete. So this is how the story goes. So one night I was going to sleep and I was angry at night. It was a whole bunch of situations that happened where it left me in a very uncomfortable and angry state. I didn't get a chance to meditate. I didn't do anything of that. I just went straight to sleep. And by doing that, you allow your mind to focus on all of these negative energies and it accumulates, right? So when I woke up in the morning, I wasn't feeling that well. So I tried to go to the gym to kind of work it out because I know going to the gym kind of push the energy out your body through vigorous motion. So that's important. That's why exercise is so important. So I'm on my way to the gym. And as I'm on my way to the gym, <laughs> this I didn't get a chance to really meditate. So I just decided to go anyway. The gym was closed when I got there. I was infuriated because I knew I was in a negative Space. And I didn't get a chance to do anything to get it out. So I was pissed, you know, like really angry because I was like, man, how could the gym be closed? They didn't let me know it was going to be closed. Where's the email? Where's anything to let me know this thing is closed? I just wasted another 20 minutes. This is insane. So I go home, take, take another shower to kind of get it out of my system. It didn't work. I still felt angry. I head off to work. As I'm going to work, there's this random guy who crosses the street and starts to yell at me for no reason whatsoever, saying, you don't know me, son. You don't know me. You don't know me, right? Getting really close to me. And I'm conscious. I'm taking my hands out of my pocket because I don't know what this guy's going to do because he was really erratic and really energetic at the same time. And I can see the disturbance in his eyes. So he did that. It felt like for about a minute, right? As I'm walking towards the, the corner. And then he yells and yells and yells and then kind of goes a different way, which is great. Now I'm observing this. I'm, I'm internally saying, what the heck is going on? What is it about me that is so angry? Because I, I realized that this person was a reflection of me at the time it was happening. So. I'm pondering this as I'm getting on the train. I'm saying, I don't know what's going on, why this happened, what is it about me? I think I know exactly what it is because it's the stuff that I was thinking about that happened to me the other day. Duh, that's what it is. So I go to work and I have some very interesting experiences with my supervisor. My supervisor asked me a question and we got into a verbal confrontation, which was odd. It was the first time we ever had anything like that. And I noticed as I started to speak and defend myself, her energy level would raise and she would start to combat whatever I was saying. So after about five minutes of this, I said, okay, something's extremely wrong. I have to go because I don't want to be in a situation where it can escalate. It wouldn't be good for any of us, especially since I love my job. Right? <laughs> So I actually left and I got into the car because my car was actually in the lot. I left there overnight. I got in the car and I pulled back. And as I pulled back, I hit another car that was exactly behind me. 
And I said to myself, oh, my God, it was two guys right across the, the, um, the way that saw me. And they were looking at me like, yeah, we've seen that, buddy. <laughs> right. And I got out. I said, I cannot believe this is happening. How, how is this happening to me? This is insane. I got out the car, looked at it. It just happened to be a BMW that I hit. So as I realized the BMW, I got a little bit more nervous, but then I realized there was no bump, there was no scrape, there was nothing. I realized I got a pass. I said, wow, I'm blessed right now. So whatever the universe is trying to tell me, I'm trying to observe it and pick it up. So I rushed to do whatever it was I had to do to finish up the work. Then I left. I left and went home early. I said, let me go home before anything else crazy happened. As I go home, I start to watch funny videos because I know funny videos lift up your vibe. They lift up your vibration. They, bl- they break the stagnant, negative emotions that you may be experiencing at the time. And as soon as you break it, you allow other positive energies to be able to infiltrate, right? So I watched that for about an hour, maybe about an hour and a half. Just funny, just laughing and laughing and laughing. And then I noticed I did start to feel a lot better. Then I ate something like that was my favorite snack. I think it was like a vegan chocolate cake or something. And I was like, wow, I'm feeling good now. <laughs> Got up, went to sleep feeling fantastic. Woke up the next morning feeling better because I went to sleep early. Got a great night's sleep. And I woke up, I felt so much better. And then as I went to work, you know, things were just flowing smoothly for me. They were flowing a lot better um, to the point where I was in the car and had my feet up, just hanging out because I was feeling good. I was like, yeah, life is good again. <laughs> right? And a lady walked past me. She started laughing. I had my feet up in the, in, in the window. And I started laughing back. I'm like, yeah, I'm relaxing. <laughs> so another lady walked past me and asked me, hey, could you help me move this stuff? I looked at him. I said, sure, just give me a minute. So I wound up helping them move about, I don't know, about 40 or 50 chairs or something like that, about two blocks away. And they were very thankful. I said, yeah, no problem. So they said, you want to come up to see my office? I said, yeah, why not? So we go up in their office. Their office is fantastic. It's like one of those modern co-working spaces with all funded entrepreneurs in there. And you seeing everybody with this excitement, you feel the energy in there that everybody's optimistic about bringing something to reality. So I go to the lady's office. She has all of these cool, great knickknacks and, and, and devices, like a table that was like futuristic. You put something on it, it, it like bounces, but it's still maintaining balance. And this cool chair that I saw that you know, you pull it and it just pops open, but the materials were fantastic. It looked like some kind of extremely expensive chair. And she said, you know what? Let me give you this $20 that I said I was going to give you. And I looked at her like, please. <laughs> you know, I didn't want the $20. That's not why I did this. I did this because I just wanted to help you out. That's all. And she looked at me and she smiled and she said, I got the perfect thing for you. And then she said, went down to me and gave me the chair that I like. I said, she said, would you take this chair? I said, of course, it's amazing. You know, and it was that kind of instant like bond. I gave her a hug and then just left with the chair. And it, as I was leaving, I was saying, this is amazing to have an experience of such high vibes, such unity by changing my by being aware in the moment, going with the flow, and not being in fear, knowing that you're you're completely where you need to be, you know. And that experience, I wanted to share because I noticed we all get into states of of negativity, frustration, anger because we are human. It's not about getting there; it's about recognizing the things that got you there, and then being able to shift your state to go into a high frequency. And, and, and live that life, right? So that is what we're here to do. We're going to experience these different lower frequencies because that's what makes us learn. So it's not about experiencing them personally like that. It's about learning how to shift out of them when you learn your lesson. 
Oh man, bringing awareness to those flows of anti-synchronicity basically is what I call it. <laughs> it's awesome because you won't even have any like, you'll have a lot of near misses maybe all of a sudden, and, but you're paying attention, you're paying attention. So self or universe or like, you know, the unconscious part of self is basically saying, well, I'll keep going easy on you, but I'm not going to stop reminding you. I know, you know, as soon as you can, you need to transmute this because that's what it is. You're even everything that seems dark or, or difficult is fuel to be transmuted into the most high potency excitement and enthusiasm and love for life. So you definitely did it with that story and <laughs> everything about it is, is super cool. I appreciate that you shared it with us and how awareness leads to action. And we can all take this to heart and realize that even when something so simple as we stub our toe occurs, that uh, you may be getting a sign that what you're thinking about or what you're focusing on or what you're trying to do is distracting you from the moment too much. And it's not really a good f flow for you and get into a different flow. And uh, like, I realized I, I lived my whole life stubbing my toe, like once a day or more. And I thought it was just part of life. And then I got more balanced and healthy and more into like what, who I am as a person and gained a lot of body, mind, connection and awareness. And all of a sudden I don't stub my toe at all anymore. I still have some clumsiness, but my reflexes are good. But you know what I mean? Even something as simple as that, as uh, hurting yourself repeatedly in the same way is like a huge indicator of, well, what's going on? Where's the, where's the unmoved energy here? So it's really cool that you're, you're a transmuter out there because that's facilitating the entire fractal to be in a continual flow state of updraft, uplift and expansion and evolution. <laughs> <laughs> I, agree. I agree completely. And it's also about, you know, when we, when we have these experiences to share, to talk about it, right? A lot of us internalize these experiences, but don't share them. Right. And a, a lot comes about when you share. Sharing is extremely powerful because not only can you help someone else, but you can learn a great deal from other people who may have had similar experiences and uh, tell you, hey, if you would have did it this way, this could have changed or next time you can do it that way. So it's all about the energetic exchange. It's all about connecting. That's why it's important for us to have videos like this, to have audio podcast. That's why it's important for us to get together personally and, and, and exchange energy because that is being human. It's human to share, to talk, to touch, to laugh. And a lot of times we're getting too inundated with these gadgets and, and social media and we're losing focus on community, on really connecting and bonding with each other because that is the real power. That's the real vibration lifter. Yeah, you're speaking my language, man. Communication and unity, especially unity itself. I mean, communion's in the word communication, but our unity is our strength. In the past, all we had was the oral tradition to pass knowledge to one to another. We are meant to advise one another because we're when we're all in our activated state, we're all universal consciousness coming through loud and clear. There's only even one person talking mm -hmm. to everybody. <laughs> it's uh, in, in a way, I mean, yeah, we have our individual characters, but even being individual means you're undivided. So like when we come to the example of the guy that came, got up in your face a bit and we go and put it in context of cleansing. Well, what, what happens when someone is for lack of better words, demonically possessed is that they're divided internally. And that, how does that come about? Well, it comes about by being at war with your body. Like if your mouth is at war with your stomach because, or your, one of your other organs, because it's something you're habitually putting in there, then you've compartmentalized a part of your own self sabotaging and sort of ignored it. So it's got no other way to come at you through other than in the external reality or possibly through as a voice in your head that starts getting weird, like a separate voice in your head that you don't recognize as yourself. But any voice in your head can only be yourself. It's your head. <laughs> I, I want to get to a couple of my questions I have for you while, uh, just to make sure that some of this, what I feel is kind of important stuff gets put out there. You know, sure, we're not doctors giving health advice, but we are giving you directions to go look into things for yourself and definitely not going to advise you to do anything that would be at all risky or dangerous. So my first question is uh, distilled water. Yes or no? Why do you feel the way you feel about it? This is something that's kind of new to me. And I found a big, a big uh, <laughs> flow state increase by switching to it. 
Well, I like the field of water, right? And uh, there's a lot of different information out there that have a uh, negative vibes about it in terms of uh, different articles that I read that state that distilled water is negative because it pulls out the organic minerals in your body. But um, from what I've read, there's also many, many positive different articles that's written that state that uh, distilled water is a very positive thing because it pulls out inorganic minerals from the body. So there's a difference. There's inorganic and there's organic minerals. So organic minerals is what you want in your body because they they give you nutrients. They facilitate so many positive attributes in your body. In your body. The inorganic minerals are the opposite. They cause a lot of mayhem and they cause a lot of inflammation and joint problems. That's where a lot of arthritis comes from is these crystals that are lodged in the body that go right into the joint that causes the pain. So drinking distilled water actually allows your body to remove these inorganic minerals. It allows you to detoxify a lot better. Once you start to drink distilled water, you will start to go to the bathroom a lot more. You will you will obviously know, you say, wow, I'm going to the bathroom so much more. I, I get a lot of uh, comments. And a lot of text messages on it because a lot of friends and family, when I make videos, they watch it and then they call me. I say, you know, you guys could just leave comments and stop texting me all day. <laughs> but what happens is you start to go to the bathroom a lot because you're flushing out all of these negative toxins in your body, the inorganic minerals. And once you do that, you automatically have to start to have better blood flow. You automatically start to allow your your bones and your tissues to get the oxygen needed from the blood because it's not as toxic. So you start to feel better. So that's one of the things I love about distilled water, right? And if you think about distilled and if you think about how the, the earth generally distills the water from the sky when it's raining. So that's why the rainwater used to be so pure. I wouldn't say that necessarily now because of the chemtrails. You know, I wouldn't advise going out there getting a bucket when it rains and it turns into water anymore unless you're really in some kind of pure Amazon space where there's not a thousand chemtrails that's just, you know, flying over, which is loaded with heavy metals and other toxins too. Some say to repel sunlight, some say to subject growth. It's so many theories out there about what exactly is going on in the sky that it's, uh, it's a little discerning. But distilled water for me is fantastic. I don't drink it all the time. I mix it between distilled water and the filtered water through my house. I have a filter and I just use that. Or sometimes I buy it from the store, but the store bought distilled water. It's a, it's a little questionable because when it's distilled, sometimes the distilled water leaches the plastic into the water. So it's a lot of things that we have to be aware of. Every once in a while, I guess it would be okay. But you don't want to do it too consistently because, like I said, the distilled water actually breaks down some of the plastic and you'll be drinking a lot of plastic. That's a good and well-rounded answer, my friend. And I feel that my investigations concur with you. I'm actually planning on getting a home distillation unit myself. Mm-hmm. Well, I think one of the most, um, what would you say, obvious clues is that just look at the shower head after it's been on there for a year and all that like white gunk and calcification building up. Yeah. That's the water that goes inside you. Uh, even, even to a large degree, if you're drinking filtered water, there can be, it can still be mineralized with inorganic minerals. And I'm starting yeah. to personally move away from kind of that type of artificial supplementing and mineralization and just eat a lot more fruit and a lot more vegetables, yeah. whole foods. But mm-hmm. I think my next question for you, cause that was such a great answer. And I think people should definitely, uh, Oh, here's a website. I want to say Aquarius, the water bearer is a cool website that co- like dot com. I think it's a cool website that collects a lot of doctors that talk about distilled water and some actual studies that can back up and, uh, 
undo the false programming that the Google search usually res- returns whenever you say is distilled water good. And it's true also the uh, yeah. concept about the, the plastic bottles. We don't want plastic bottles anyway, if we can avoid it going forward. But okay, so my next question for you, though, would be where where's a good place to start when someone wants to begin detoxifying? Like what organ do you recommend going for first? Or is there a kit? Uh, do you have some videos at the uh, begin here entry level? <laughs> begin here. <laughs> well, what I would say is the first thing to start with is your colon. Your colon is the, um, I think it could be the number one elimination system. It's your colon, urinating, it's sweating, it's breathing, right? These are the main detoxification systems that we have. So the first one you want to start with definitely is the colon because the colon, if it is backed up with excess fecal matter, you will start to retoxify yourself. If you start to do too many things, you start to try to cleanse and your colon is backed up. You'll re-detoxify yourself and it continue to rotate in your blood. So the best way to get rid of the toxins is to start with the colon, clean the colon out, start with like six days. Sometimes I have, um, I, I do these six day colon cleanses by a company called Global Healing Center, which is fantastic colon cleanses. They're oxygen based. You know, the, the, the doctor, Dr. Group actually said that. He started the process of building it through Nikolai Tesla's work, which, you know, Nikolai Tesla is amazing. Anybody that doesn't know, go and research Nikolai Tesla if you want to start to know about energy, because he is like the godfather of energy. So the colon cleansers actually remove the fecal matter by dissolving it. The oxygen dissolves it from your colon. So through this colon process, there's two things. There's the colon cleanser and there's the probiotic. Once you start to do a lot of colon cleanses, you will start to get rid of all the bacteria in your colon. So what you have to do is replace the positive bacteria in your colon. This would allow you to not get gassy. This will allow you to not be belching and gassing up all over the place, which can be very uncomfortable and embarrassing. (laughs) <laughs> right? So the probiotic gives you that good feeling. You will start to feel really balanced. And whenever you defecate two to three times a day, you will automatically start to feel better. Your energy level will raise because you don't have as much toxin thing. And if you want to go from there, you probably would do like a liver cleanse, then go to a kidney cleanse. Why do I say the liver next? Is because the liver is one of the, if not one of the biggest organs in the body. I think the, the skin is the biggest, but other than that, it's the liver. So you clean out your liver, which also creates enzymes. A lot of people have problems with digesting food because they don't have enough enzymes and positive bacteria in the gut. There, <clears throat> so the microbiome is actually infested with crap, right? And a lot of it, it has holes in it because of the GMOs that we're eating, which create holes in the lining and then allows the, the um, food to go through to the blood and then which causes inflammation. It's a cycle. So that's why I said the colon first, and then you can start with the liver, which will create the extra enzymes. And if you, you clean the liver, you automatically start to clean the gallbladder, which creates... Um, more of uh, what, what is this stuff called? Uh, the the other stuff that actually digests your food. It will pop back in my head in a few seconds. But these things are are the the beginning basis of cleaning because once you start to clean the liver, the liver will clean the blood, right? And then you start to really feel energized because now all of a sudden you're starting to get healthy, moving blood, which most of us have stagnant, inflamed, toxic blood. Some of us got maple (laughs) syrup and Dr. Pepper for blood. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's be a little little bit of maple syrup. Yeah. (laughs) Right? So these are the main organs you start 
to work with to cleanse. If you do that, you're automatically going to start to feel better. And you need it needs to be something that's done on a consistent basis because, like I said, there it goes. There's bile. The the um the gallbladder creates bile. Bile digest helps you digest the food. So that's why it's a combination. So actually, when you're doing your liver, you're also enhancing the gallbladder, right? And once you start to do these things, like I said, you're going to start feeling better. It's automatic. A lot of people that watch the channel always reference these particular videos because they were going through life-changing elements and they wanted an alternative. And most of us, you know, we get these diagnoses from the, the doctors which I love doctors. I think they're amazing. And um, I think they're necessary. But I also think it's necessary to have alternative modalities to be able to deal with things that are impairing, you know, the whole disease, the disease you're having. We need a more holistic way of being able to understand what's going on in our body and how to correct. Because it's not always about surgery and medication. Because it seems to me these are the dominant things that a lot of doctors are doing. And I think most of them have well intentions. I think the reason most of them became doctors is because they wanted to help people. But I think the system itself has basically sucked the life force out of a lot of doctors, sucked the hope out of them, sucked the the reality of being able to really provide a healing modality to people because a lot of times maintenance, it's maintenance of some kind of disorder or disease. It's not curing it. And once you see the things that you're doing to people who haven't been helping them and you continue because you have these large debts that you have to pay. You, you, you have three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in student loans that you have to pay. It becomes an issue because you have a mortgage, you have kids, so you have to pay it. Right. And then also, if you're recommending a lot of medication, sometimes you get kickbacks from those medications. Lots of that. Yeah. So it could be a big issue when you see the things that you're doing are not helping people. What do you do? Where do you go? You have all this debt. You know that you're not easily most of the time allowed to even talk about nutrition to the patient because then you could have issues with your license, right? So you have all of these systematic ways to control a population of doctors. And a lot of times they're not even aware of it. Because it, you know, it becomes their world. There are a lot of them are specialized in these particular things. So they don't really get a chance to go out and learn about nutrition and herbs and other whole, holistic modalities. Yeah. And they're worked to like the bone. A lot of them, uh, the ones that are really trying hard to be healers are spending so much time. It's hard probably for them to find the space to put in some new education as much as I bet they try. But then a lot of that education is coming from the same old circles and big pharma companies that have really incentivized the loopholes and issues with our current medical system that keep people sick. And it's not, it's really not good to get all judgmental and angry at the doctors or the nurses and just realize that they're, they're playing the game correctly by the rules as they're currently written. And they're just trying to do the right thing. Generally speaking, probably very few doctors are ever like, I don't care who I prescribe what, as long as I get a Ferrari. I mean, there's good and bad people in every, everything. So, I mean, that's probably exists somewhere, but what I like is the model in ancient China where I don't know how far back ago this was, but as I, I heard this somewhere that, it used to be you'd have a family doctor that would come and check on everybody once a month and he'd get a monthly stipend. But if grandma had a cold, then he didn't get paid that month. So the incentive was to keep everyone well all the time and keep them maintenance and well. Whereas the system we have now incentivizes people to be ill perpetually. There's, as a good friend of mine said on a previous episode, there's no profit in healthy people or dead people, the money's right in the middle in sickness. <laughs> when we're doing things for profit, it's just kind of like an uh, inevitable outcome. And that's why it's so important to take health into your own hands because no one's more motivated to get it right than you. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. And, you know, one of the ways to keep yourself healthy is to detox. Detox, 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 and put nutrition in. 
So once you start to detox and you start to get a rhythm of it, you know, because like I said, we're being inundated all the time by our doctors. So it's important for us to take the necessary action to take care of ourselves and detox all the time and to take full responsibility of our health. No one knows your body better than you do. Absolutely no one. People can estimate, guesstimate a lot of times to what they think the problem is. But it's always good to go to the doctor, see what's going on, get these exams if you can, kind of stay away from the ones that give you massive doses of radiation because then that is another big issue. But basically, once you detox, you put the nutrition in. There's tons of nutrition that's out there that can help you try to stay away from non-organic ones if you can. And find out about the companies themselves. Find out about the company that you are buying this nutrition from because a lot of it is not what it says it is. Some of the herbs and products that you can buy, they may say something, but a lot of times the standard rules are to put at least 40%. So up to 40% of the actual herb, then the rest can be filled with something else. So try to find out the companies that have uh, a lot of integrity. You find out the companies that have this integrity and then you purchase from them because their goal is to get you well, not to keep on come, letting you come back and buy more and more um, herbs that are ineffective or other vitamins or minerals. Yeah, bro. Because if we all get healthy and well, we won't even need to play the commerce game anymore. So we can like put the monopoly pieces back in the box and all just live life and be together again and not be all like stressed with the rat race. We can still have nice things. We can still make cool stuff, but it's really like the dis-ease that puts people at fear of each other and looking to exploit each other because they feel a low energy level. And it has a lot to do with this this issue with their body, these issues with their bodies that keeps us in that survival mode that makes us believe that it's us or them fight or flight mentality. But you mentioned nutrition. I think this is a great segue for this point in the show that I wanted to jump to because for me, my personal experience, whenever I became a vegan was, or actually I'll even say, but better than vegan, whole food, plant-based diet. <laughs> so like not just junk food vegan, I do have a couple of junk foods here and there, but particularly eating real fruits and vegetables in the form that they came in. And uh, when I did that, my, for lack of better phrasing, my poops got weird and I wasn't, I wasn't feeling good in my stomach all the time. I wasn't digesting it well. And I hit up a cleanse. I did a colon cleanse through a website called Secret Energy. I also mm -hmm. want to say that I've done the cleanse that you brought up through Global Healing Center. That was the one I actually did a couple of weeks ago. And okay. it was, how was it? How it was, was it? How was it? Fantastic. It was a really smooth sailing experience. And this other one I did through Secret Energy was a little more extreme in that it had a component of this kind of like expanding clay type stuff that you mix mm -hmm. with water and drink. And then it pushes uh -huh. through your your colon and actually really scrapes stuff out. And yeah. I did it for longer, like nine days. Mm -hmm. And that... In that experience, I've mentioned it before. It was a couple of years ago. I even did some episodes of the show about it. The last day I had a full on out of body experience and was floating around the house and looking at stuff and my, and seeing my body below me. So I know something was activated through it. But, um, I noticed after that cleanse and the whole reason I bring it up is that afterwards I was able to assimilate into my plant based diet really easily. Everything digestion wise got smooth. And it's because, like you say, it uh, replaced the sort of bad soldiers with the good soldiers. I'd love to hear more of your thoughts on how cleansing can help you uh, transition to a healthier diet eat more easily and comfortably. Well, um, the cleansing, like you said, allows you to be able to first absorb the nutrition that you're getting in. Uh, a lot of times we're putting in this nutrition and we're buying all these drinks and shakes and minerals, but we're not absorbing them. We're not absorbing them because our colon is filled with toxins. So in order to actually absorb the nutrition, you have to get rid of the, the toxins in the colon because they line the colon and that's where you absorb everything. So it's not what you eat, right? It's what you absorb. It's very important. If you're not absorbing, you are not getting the nutrition no matter how much you spend. So it could be a lot of expensive nutrition that you're actually putting in uh, without getting the benefits. It doesn't mean I don't like to waste money. I don't know about you, but I don't like to waste money. So it's, it's the best. Been thing. there and done that. <laughs> 
So it's the best thing in the world to actually cleanse your colon and get the nutrition in. And as far as a transition into a, like a healthier diet, uh, you will start to be able to appreciate the foods that you eat once you start to cleanse. Because first of all, once you do a cleanse, and if you do it for a specific amount of time, your taste buds will be altered. A lot of times when we're on these high sugar diets, you know, it's very hard for us to taste the subtleties of fruits. It's very hard for us to really connect with some fantastic vegetables, right? Without putting a zillion pounds of butter on it to make it taste good. (laughs) So that's one of the, the biggest benefits. You start to cleanse. Your taste buds open up. They become much more acute to be able to taste the finer qualities of the fruits and the vegetables that you are consuming. So therefore, you will start to eat more fruits and vegetables because they taste better. And therefore, your health will start to improve. It's all a cycle. It's all a cycle. The the benefits of cleansing is immense. The transition will go from eating more fruits and vegetables to wanting to drink more water, right? Because you're getting more and more water by just eating more fruits. That's the, that's why they were created. It has tons of fiber in the fruits and the vegetables. It has tons of water. So it's dual and triple and quadruple purposes just in eating natural foods that the earth provides you. Right. So the cleansing is the transition. And then something happens to you once you start to get into a space of trying out on organic fruit, trying out organic ginger. Once you're cleansing, you start to do that. You will notice a huge difference in the taste and the benefits from organic and non-organic. And once you start to realize the huge differences, you won't want to go back. You won't want to go back to eating some weird Frankenstein fruits and vegetables or, or big bats in general. You won't want to. Because I've had something, just a matter of fact, two weeks ago, I had a friend of mine that said they watched a couple of videos and they decided to start to cleanse. Now, they started to cleanse, and they got sick, and they was wondering, oh, this cleanse thing is not working. I don't know what you're talking about on these videos. It's not working. (laughs) I said, look, you're getting sick because your body is completely overwhelmed with toxins. Your, Your body's trying to eliminate it. So have you been taking the colon cleanses? Well, I skipped it there too. Oh my God, that's horrible. Because now the, the toxins are being recycled in your body, right? So have you been drinking tons of water? Oh, I drink tons of water. How much is a ton of water? Oh, about three cups. <laughs> right? I'm like, no, no, no. You got to try to drink at least a gallon of water, minimum. Try to you have to flush it out the system. If you don't flush it out the system, it stays in the system and you will continually get sick. So do that. Clean it, clean it out with colon cleansers, drink the water, and make sure you put some nutrition in. The nutrition will help your cells get energized. Your cells will get energized. They'll have the energy to do what they need to do to clean your body. A week later, they call and say, oh, I'm feeling much better. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why? Yeah, I did the stuff you were talking about. So, and then after that, A week after that, they started to realize the differences between the inorganic and organic vegetables and fruits. So they started to want the organic fruits and vegetables because they said this tastes so sweet. Before they couldn't taste it because they ate tons of sugar every day, which numbed them out. It numbed them out. So now, because they were detoxifying, they started to eat the more fruits, more vegetables, and they're excited about the journey of cleansing and eating healthy. So it's all connected. Yeah. So good, man. So good. The 
just that getting that root chakra fired up with the colon working actually gets you fired up for life. It's a real thing. It's energy on a multidimensional level or metaphysical energy in- increase. And even I like to throw out there that meta and meat are anagrams of each other. Right. And that's why a lot of people find that they want to stop eating meat through their metaphysical studies. Cause you realize at a certain point that if you have a lot of weight, you're going to wait. If you're eating really dense things, if you're really dense, then, <laughs> then like you're dead. If you're gonna wait, you're gonna wait. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you want to get light, if you want to get enlightened, you got to get light in a in a yeah. real way. And I, I think part of what is going on whenever you get less dense is you're increasing your sensitivity to subtle things. So, like you said, the organics will be different, but you also. Like I've noticed at certain points in my life, I would take a, a type of supplement and I'd be like, I don't even know if I feel better or different or whatever. Yeah. But the more I refine my internal systems and get all of that in balance, the, like I will feel the energy off of a, a berry, <laughs> like yeah. something small. And it's amazing what you can do off of fruit power once you've got the uh, internal biome for it. And that sensitivity internally is also going to lead you to having more empathy and intuition for the world because all all the psychic sense really is and your psychic ability is actually how much you're paying attention you'll notice something coming through on the external world connected to the internal world and you'll be like oh this is a real message from self like i can and then you're having a psychic moment but it's all about a level of sensitivity and cultivating that connection to the body i think and (laughs) i love i love all the the connection that you're bringing to your direct friends and family, they're actually getting into asking you about this. I hope to facilitate that myself. I'm ready to, to take that step forward and branch out the podcast in that direction and make cleansing a more regular topic because you really can't talk about it enough being that it's the foundation for everything that we're going to do to advance and expand. I even often say that you're just going in circles in life until you raise your vibration. Uh, the, the matrix or the false time system that everyone's in or the illusion is this rat race on a wheel in a circle where you just have the same things come at you because you have the same shit in you (laughs) 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 until you graze up and we get that bird's eye view of the the whole field. You're just going to be like a scared little mouse running around in the blades of grass, but you can definitely elevate that. But it is also about grounding it back down that uh, because, you know, like you were saying earlier, people can get in those high vibrational states, but if they don't ground it in and anchor it into their life as like a through through the practices and the purification that actually generates those frequencies, then it's a fleeting experience. You get the experience because self wants you to know it's possible that there's something more. Actually, I want to tell a quick anecdote. I met this guy at a music festival that I was at last weekend. And we were talking about how he had felt a loss of connection to his root. And he told me this story about going through a big spiritual awakening in his early 20s. But then and feeling like he was really into a lot of all knowing and a lot of peace. And he was a facilitator for healing for a lot of people. And he had heard that, well, something's going to happen. You're going to get this wound or this uh, crash. You don't have any trauma that you're working with. Just what people were trying to warn him, like, just be careful. Like, uh, don't get full of yourself in a sense, because you can have this big awakening, but not really be grounded in reality. And so what happened to him is he wound up going, going to jail for, I'm not sure how long, but I think over a year. And in that space, he had to build up a persona or a character that was just like for survival, or he felt that he needed it for survival, a certain level of like toughness and armoring. And what I was, what I was conveying to him. And I think, I think that we really connected on this was that the, that armoring is actually coming from your root chakra primarily that survival mode character is because you're in root chakra consciousness. Cause when you're in that prison, the, the stuff they're feeding you is horrendous, horrendous. And so like I advised him about cleansing. I gave him a lot of the same th- top t- talks uh, that we just had. And, and hopefully that that resonated because just by getting into some diaphragmatic breathing with me and helping him feel the energy down in his root and in his core, it was like he had this spark of like, I do want to do this. I am on the up and up like I am ascending. All I have to do is make the choice that it's happening. So even if it feels like 
there's always an easy way to get on the path. So even if it feels like cleansing or changing your diet is like, that's too much for me right now, then just get into the breath work, really get into feeling, feeling yourself from the inside and increasing that sensitivity, I guess, is uh, where I'll wrap up that little speech with. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, it's all connected, right? I mean, that's a heck of an experience there, friend had. I mean, to, to go from feeling completely connected and to be a, a, an anchor for other people and then to, to be sent to prison, that is a life lesson that is incredible. I always tell the universe, hey, I want to learn, I want to grow, but just make it smooth and sweet. <laughs> That's how I do it too. I'm always just like smooth transitions is what I'm all about, like a yeah. DJ or something. Because uh, nature, whenever it brings you big changes that are rapid, it's always like earthquakes and tornadoes and catastrophe. Yeah. But those gradual changes sculpt the beautiful mountains and the valleys and the rivers past the, the flow of that water sculpts it over time, you know? So just keep drinking water, everybody. You're going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> but man, we are at the point where we got to kind of wrap it up. So I'd love to hear you package yourself in a, in a little bit of plugging where people can find you and what you'd like to do to connect with them and any final closing thoughts you might have for us. Well, you can find me at if I only knew the number two on YouTube. And the whole purpose of that particular phrase is if I only knew meaning, if I only knew to, my life would be so much better. So we need to share with each other. That's the whole emphasis on it. And I share spirituality, health, and adventure because I like to do a lot of physical activity. Also, you can find me on Instagram at if I only knew dot co. That's my Instagram page. And other than that, that's it with social media. I'm not too social media heavy like that. It's those two that I love and I stick with. And yeah, check me out. Follow me. Leave a message if you find it uh, valuable. And if you don't, leave me a message and tell me this stuff <laughs> and you need to work on it. I appreciate everything. <laughs> uh, oh, and other than that, that's it. It's been a pleasure to, to talk with you. I appreciate the invite. And I appreciate you. Uh, your thoughts, your experiences that you shared today. And it, it's really been an honor to, to kick it with you. I feel the same way, dude. It inspired me quite a bit. And I would loved getting to know you better. And you've got a really fun vibe about you that uh, I could definitely see myself continuing to watch more of your videos and learning uh, and use it as a great resource for me to go up the ladder and cleanse the, the organs that I haven't made a, a run at yet. So thanks for being here, man. Thanks for listening to us, Royal Ones and uh, Interverse Tribe, and we'll catch you all later. Okay. <laughs>again at the end of another podcast episode it's been one that i've had on my mind a long time because <laughs> man it's ironic i came up with this word for what i felt like while i was not publishing this episode and sitting on it because i was on some uh, voyages and journeys i thought i feel so content stipated right now <laughs> and it was just so ironic because this is all about you know colon gut health cleansing the organs getting regular, returning to the flow. And it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Right after I had a personal cleanse, I had this conversation. And then not long after that, went on an unplanned sort of vacation, went to Colorado to a Sonic Bloom Festival and derailed the production schedule that I was on a little bit. And then I realized like what, why I really decided to do it was because I can't just only do things for the sake of advancing in one direction. And I have to do some things that are for the sake of advancing in purely fun directions and dimensions. And that's what Sonic Bloom was and more. 
And I think maybe others can attest to this June as we're going into the beginning of July here, having some really strong healing capacity to it. Uh, a lot of powerful energy reflecting on old hurts and old ways of thinking about things that I believe that now that we're here in this state of knowing our deepest purpose, or at least being aware of our deepest self, all is self, that we can actually face these darker parts of self, what we see as darker parts, and really transmute them, begin to do the exact same thing that the bacteria inside your gut does to the food, the dense, heavy stuff, break it down and make it energy, make it fuel, make everything that's challenging you right now. The reason that you're getting out of bed in the morning is to achieve that transformation, getting out of your own way and allowing the changes <laughs> to take place as fast as they desire to without putting a throttle on mother nature, which is literally the mother energy in your entire reality. So when we stop resisting the changes, we open up the flow of abundance from the mother. It all works like that. <laughs> I'm going to keep up the changes on purpose. It always helps to get uncomfortable early so that you can smile later. Just like when you go to the gym, I'm definitely going to be following up with Laval's videos and going into a liver cleanse next. I'll let you guys know how that goes. I'm sure. I always talk about stuff. And thank you, Lavald, for coming on the podcast. It was really cool of you to take a chance on me. Nah, I haven't made that joke before, so allow it once, okay? <laughs> and I appreciate all the knowledge and the enthusiasm that Lavald brought to the episode and to what he does on YouTube with his channel, If I Only Knew Too. And I really hope you, hope you check out his channel as well. Because I really think the cleanse is like the most important element of recent interverse stuff as far as getting down to the solutions because we talk about all the lofty things that we intend for life and what we like like things we've done and where we've been but where what's the way forward how do we actually turn on that manifestation generator how do we actually pull things out of the imagination directly like <laughs> i mean It'd be like, I, I want to get to the point where whenever you fall asleep and have a dream about like you got this cool new toy, like when you're a kid, a new bike or something to the point where you can wake up in the morning and that bike actually exists. Like you just change it over to that one, change the channel. <laughs> it's not just strictly for material things. That's just the example I would use. Of course, once you get to that point of uh, ability, kind of what actually gets you there is the same thing that you'd be doing while you're there, which would you would just be walking the plane looking for where the flow is blocked to unblock it. So go ahead and start that process in your own personal life. And then before you know it, you will be pulling things straight out of your dreams into the reality, almost like on a 24 hour snap your fingers, Thanos infinity gauntlet level. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Uh, seeing it accelerating in my own life, the more clear I get my channels. So yeah. I already said thanks to Lavald, but one more time I'll say thanks. And thanks to everyone for being patient with me in this June while I took sort of an unplanned vacation, gave myself a mid-year break. It takes a lot to produce this show. Not that I'm not up for it, but I it's actually like a resource thing that I've been juggling for a while now. And I know I talk about this sometimes, but when I am not at the point of being fully supported by the show, I can't put as much time into it is the fact of the matter. So the closer you guys can get me to fully supported by what I'm doing here on Interverse, by you all have to, all you all you would have to do is sign up for Interverse Plus, which is super easy, five dollars a month on Patreon, and you get double length episodes. For that, even a temporary patronage, you'd be helping me achieve the goal, and that goal would also help you if you like the show because you get more of it, more episodes, more content. I am still branching out into doing more and more live content. Just ordered some new equipment for that, which is going to be cool. That's the other thing. Equipment costs are real. Like it's not free to get all this stuff. A lot of what I have that's super good now came from birthday presents and things from people that really love me. And so that's a huge form of support. In fact, what you hear now is just all around built on support by the, the tribe, the family, the direct family. So get in on that support and train. You got to give to receive, as they say. 
that's why I give the time that it takes to make the show as uh, the best I can because it opens me up to receive so much, especially in the framework of knowledge, which, you know, knowledge is power. Knowing is half the battle, right? So you can get more knowledge from this episode in particular if you sign up to Interverse Plus on Patreon. Link in the show notes. Things we talked about getting faster at repairing the body spaceship after an energetic crash. I feel like that's a super important topic uh, to me because I recently experienced a bit of a crash that I had to, it was a hot landing more like it wasn't a full on crash, but <laughs> I was in a very lofty place and uh, right after the cleanse and, you know, I'm, I don't know, menstruated or something and got a little further down into the low uh, and super touchy emotional state that is so unlike me for a while. So we talked about, ironically, we talked about this question before I actually even hit the low point. I thought I had crashed, but I was still in my descent. <laughs> and uh, we talked about six month cleanses and how making media about our journey helps us follow through with what we say that we want and the, what we intend. So that's pretty cool. Talked about why it matters to connect to others with healing knowledge. Same kind of thing. Talked about getting scientific about your body's nutrient balance. Laval shared experiences of temporarily eating meat after decades of vegetarianism. He gave some recommendations on powerful supplements as well, which I linked in the show notes, like lipospheric vitamin C. And uh, we talked about supplement stories, recovering from extreme physical exertion. Talked about staying healthy and being fanatical about your own wellness and not just about a, per, a particular dietology, which I just made up that word. It's like an ideology of a diet, dietology. Yeah, I'm full of new words today. <laughs> and we talked about how Laval sets up his positive relationship with money. I think that's a pretty cool thing to get some more insight on from a successful YouTuber like him and someone who's clearly enjoying what he's doing too. So it's definitely a win-win. And we talked about many other things in that, but that's just a little taste, a little preview. That's plus, interverse plus, double your pleasure, if you please. And, oh, I have something cool to tell you guys. There's some new reviews on iTunes. The iTunes podcast app has a feature where you can drop like a five-star review and write something. And when you guys do that, it actually helps the show bump up in whatever algorithms or whatnots and more people find it. So... Yeah, I like to share when people do that because they usually say cool stuff. I have two new ones for y'all. First is from Blended Realities. This is from like May, so it's been a while, but I just caught him. He said, cleanse. <laughs> Great YouTube video. I think I will print out the food chakra chart and shop for foods in each area tomorrow. After I have a solid new diet, it's time for a cleanse. I think I'll start with the easier one. Thanks, Chance. So that's from in May. And I'm just now noticing that. And it's about a video I did on YouTube about cleansing, which you can check out if you want more context to this conversation, because I definitely say some things that weren't brought up in this conversation. You could talk about cleansing ad infinitum, <laughs> detox for life, like the episode uh, title says. But the newer review is from Young Girl or Jungle Girl. It's J U N G G R R L. <laughs> My new fave, this podcast touches on all my favorite subjects such as voluntarism, consciousness, evolution, conspiracy, spirituality, inner work, and more, I'm sure. The host is a skilled interviewer with a bright mind and a loving, accepting attitude. I've only listened to a few episodes so far, and the more I listen, the more I'm appreciating it. Glad I stumbled onto Interverse Heart Sign. And, and you know, it's not wise to get too invested in what people do and don't say about what you're doing or what people think, but no matter how detached I get from what other people think, it's always going to make my heart feel good when someone says something so kind about what is essentially my baby. <laughs> uh, some people have kids when they're 30. I am have This is my kid. So thank you, young girl or young girl. I don't know which either would be cool. <laughs> and thank you for anyone else that's ever left a review on iTunes. And if you want to do that again, I'd love to read it. So especially if you put something funny or <laughs> traumatic on there, not traumatic to you, but like call me out on some bullshit, I'd, I'd laugh. I'd read it on the air still, unless it was just like horribly mean. <laughs> okay. Well, 
I think I've gone on long enough. I'm going to move on to the next episode that is in my production schedule instead of just talking forever to you. I just love talking to you specifically because you are here to engage with what I'm doing. And that makes you a very special person to me because we have this quantum entanglement connection. And I want to continue that connection, the free flow of that energy. And so I really want to move on to the next episode, which is going to be great. And another one kind of in the health arena. It's amazing how they tie together unplanned in so many elements. Like every month, it's like there's practically a a theme you could pick out between the episodes. It's pretty cool. It's not planned. And I'm really happy to get the, this one out of the lineup because the constant the content station was real. All right. Last thing I'll let you know is that aside from everything we talked about, including some powerful supplements that you could take that Laval recommends, all that's in the show notes with links. You can check that out. Aside from that, Patreon, sign up for plus, that's in the show notes. Laval's YouTube channel, his Instagram, that's in the show notes. Very much worth a follow. I'd love to see you guys show some love to him. Please do that if you feel so called. And finally, the last thing that's linked in those beautiful show notes is Lucidalia or Lucid a really groovy producer out of St. Louis, not that far from me. I think I've probably played Lucid on the show before, but it's been a while and he's got some new stuff. So you're going to hear that. That's the music I'm playing for this outro. You can find it at soundcloud.com slash Lucidalia. And that's it, guys. On to the next greater and next best thing. Always moving forward and expanding. Thank you for being along for the ride and for... <laughs> Balancing those polarities within yourself and finding a place where you can have voices in your head like mine, where we together realize it's all our voice. It's all in our head and it's all good. (laughs) Catch you guys later. 